12 to 24 months. As I say, we count that there are right now about 20 to 30 players who are willing to pay up for high speed. Maybe will there be many more who get into this game? Will the regulators come in and change the game and take them all out and you'll have to go to your contingency plans? Or what do you think is going to happen over the next year or two? Uh, I'll start this one up again, Judy. Uh, from, our, from our seat, the, the trading space, we refer to it internally as our military industrial complex. We get to invent some really cool technology that these folks can pay for. They have, they have the will to invest in it. But as we're a layer one shop in transmission and we focus on systems, you can make the connection quite quickly that layer one backhaul, for example, to take care of video streams at very high capacities is another useful tool. Uh, I think I'll quote Mr. Newby at one point uh, saying that you know fiber to every tower is a dream, or the dream, but it's also a dream. You know, it's just not going to happen. So that's another participatory way that the wireless application and the fiber application have to work together. But in terms of regulatory pieces coming in, I think that uh, there's some of that happening right now a little bit. We're seeing a tremendous boom in our European uh, uh, business as a result. But that's going to change ebb and, ebb and tide. And I would also argue that even in the trading game, these guys want to have the fastest car. So I think that we all need to continue to work to, to drive towards that. And there'll be ancillary benefits, I think, for all of us uh, here in these guys on the service side that have various verticals in their business. We've got the same in ours. Thank you very much. It's obvious that you know, uh, many financial sectors is going to um, you know, demand more and uh, higher and higher speed, definitely, for sure, for uh, 12 months. Uh, or 12, uh, 24 months to go. And, uh, and that's why the, um, the tele telecommunications company are uh, providing a very stable, very high speed, very good quality service. That's why um, under that, uh, we are going to provide as a collocation provider to continue to towards the uh, such demand. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it's certainly on the high speeds, that's, that's a, a, a I, I think a given that it's going to happen. So we go, you know, people talk about one gig sort of as a service, 10 gig, and then it'll be 40 and 100. So there's no question that that's, it'll all be transit. That'll be one of the things. Um, you know, the other thing that I think can come into it, um, I'll just mention it because I think with the efforts of, of things like the Metro Ethernet Forum and how they're standardizing uh, user network interfaces, you'll see more pull towards having very standardized Ethernet interfaces that maybe can support things like virtual flows, like Ethernet virtual private line, more emphasis on that. But, but the big one, I think, I'll, I'll, what I said at the, the beginning there, just, I mean, it seems to me that with the way things are transitioning to uh, virtualizing the data centers, unifying switching fabrics, and um, the whole software-defined networking and the push for that, that maybe there's an opportunity here somehow to get those two points in space that we're fighting to get lower latency with and somehow in that virtual world let them move together. Thank so you. Interesting. Yeah. Look, I'm very excited with what I hear. We happen to be in, in probably one of the fastest growing regions in the world and, and you have that typically when you're in an area of, of uh, developing countries. And as long as things are going in the right direction, we will continue to, to serve, uh, let's say, those communities. So definitely 12 to 24 months of short term. And in that short term, we will continue to see these things. Um, I believe that it's going to be significantly longer before the, it, it may taper off in terms of the number of players, but each player is going to want to have more bandwidth and they're going to want to have more services, and that's basically what you need to be ready um, to provide, let's say, to those users. And that goes back to solidifying the partnerships with, with companies that, that offer complementary service or, or solution for those, let's say, for those players. And one thing that you cannot forget is that, for example, in the subsea world, it takes you a good three years to build a new system, if not more, right? Probably five years from the moment you start doing the, the, the financials and the validation and get the funding and, and then put it in the water and deliver it. And, and uh, you would not be doing a huge investment in the multi-million dollar, you know, 300 to 500 million dollars if you didn't know that in your projections you're going to get uh, some money to recover that investment over time. So It's nice that we offer an addictive service. Nobody ever wants less of what we offer. Bjarni, you know well how long it takes to build these networks. Um, yeah, absolutely do. Uh, but if the, uh, to the question, so your question was, um, do we see a lot of spill out or, or, or newcomers come in? There, there's, there are about 20 to 30 main uh, high frequency traders or very, very savvy 
um, traders that, that um, can justify paying a substantial premium for our services. There, are, there will always be new players coming in, and we have seen new players come in, and there's some fall on. They're what what uh, they thrive on is all their PhD degrees and all the algorithms and the, the geniuses that, that, that work there and, and use our, our connectivity. And that's a, a fierce com competitive environment. But what they don't control and what will be very interesting to see is the, the regulatory environment. Tobin tax or no Tobin tax, what happens um, as a result of recent elections in Europe and in US, how is the, um, the election going to come here, uh, go here? Uh, is it going to stay, uh, the, is the current government going to stay in, in or are, are, is somebody else going to take over? That's probably going to impact uh, whether there will be a tax here or not. We have seen in Europe that the uh, European Union has actually agreed to put a, try to put an, a, a, a tax in place, but un only under a certain uh, restrictions or conditions if a minimum of 10 countries do it, et cetera, et cetera. But um, those countries that have the most to gain or most to lose, be Ireland and be UK, mostly UK and Switzerland, they have said absolutely no way over my dead body. There's no, it's not going to be a Tobin tax introduced in London. Um, that is, the, the PM has said that uh, very, very, very clearly. Over 100,000 people would, uh, it would impact the lives of 100,000 people that work in the financial industry in London. And they've just said no. Um, but we as operators, we can have our opinion on that, but we, when we go out to our customers and, and have, the, have that conversation, it's more, much more meaningful what they say. And they do not believe that that's going to significantly impact their business in, in, in that, that they wouldn't or they couldn't justify anymore paying the premium over the lowest latency circuit. They say it, it might change how we use it, but it's always going to be very, very valuable to have those, those circuits. So it's going to be interesting. But another point uh, that plays also into who are the players, it is the development of the assets classes that are being traded under the HFT. Uh, it's traditionally been um, equity trading and derivatives, but now uh, those guys are moving into fixed income mm -hmm. uh, and foreign exchange uh, very rapidly, and, and that's actually benefiting us because uh, the, by, by far the towers of the, the FX and the fixed income trading is in New York and, and London, so that's, mm -hmm. uh, that, that calls for even more need for Project Express for us. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you.